Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen. Now I catered this channel to beginners and a great topic has come up where even I found it myself. I watched a lot of Black Opal Direct and he just makes cutting opal look so easy and effortless that when I first started I was shocked at how difficult it, I was actually finding it. So here I've got some of my really early stones. So all of these are well before the YouTube channel started. Uh, these ones over here in particular, that one there as well I think, this one here, these were a little bit, little bit later, closer to the start of the channel. And we'll just go through, and I just don't want people to get disheartened by finding it so difficult to start out with. Because it, it really, I wouldn't say I was the most talented person, as we'll see in a second. It wasn't just natural to me to pick them up and just suddenly just start shaping them and getting a nice polish and finish on it. Trust me. All of these pieces here don't even have a finish on it because I wasn't 100% confident in how to go about it. So let's just zoom in a little bit and have a look here. So this is one of the, this is actually I think the first piece I ever practiced on. So it's just a piece of potch, nothing too exciting. And you can see that it's pretty crazed and everything. This is me trying to do a cushion cut. It was definitely the first time I've ever tried it. You can see that there's no symmetry, there's no finish, I didn't get it shiny at all, I just gave up. And you can even see here, look at that edge. You can see that I've flattened the front of this, this was with sandpaper I believe, flattened the front of this. And then I've just tried to dome it, and it's not a dome, it's like a facet almost. Absolutely terrible. Just roast younger me as hard as you want in the comments, because this is garbage. See I've even tried to round some of these corners but really I've just faceted it again. It's just, oh it's it's tough to look at this one but I keep it because it's a great reminder of where you start and everyone starts somewhere. Don't be worried about finding it difficult at the start. It is quite difficult at first but once you get the hang of it, trust me you'll be absolutely flying through it. If you're just getting started this week, and you have pieces that look like this or even worse, just don't even stress it. Just keep working on some of this. Crazed potch is worth absolutely nothing. So the worst thing that can happen is that you waste a couple hours. And I reckon I would have sunk oh, countless hours into this one. It was a much bigger piece. It was fairly square to start with from memory. And yeah, I just thought perfect time to try out a cushion cut. And this is what it looked like. And in terms of shaping, shaping is very difficult, especially when you're doing it by hand or with a Dremel, as we will see in this piece here. So here you go. This, believe it or not, is an attempt at a teardrop or a pear shape. No symmetry whatsoever. Another piece of crazed potch. I only notice now that it's actually got a tiny bit of green in there. Just a random green flash appeared. But this is, this is also, this is worse. This is worse than the cushion cut. Teardrops are a little bit tougher. I didn't have templates or stencils or anything then. This side is still lumpy as hell. None of the edges are even. Look at that. I must have had the crazing chip off a bit here and that's probably when I gave up on it. There will be stones that just fall apart. Especially when it's crazing. I don't even know if I knew what crazing was back when I was playing with this stuff. This is sandpaper as well, and I reckon that just cleaved off. I can't really remember it. It was quite a number, number of years ago, but I mean, still foggy. That's not just it being out of focus. That is just how I left it, a hazy mess. Probably worked it up to 1,200, maybe 2,000 grit, but rushed through the stages. I can see that this needs to go all the way back to like 200 grit. Maybe, oh no, that's probably a bit harsh. 400 grit is where this needs to go back because I've just rushed through it and I would have been wondering why it wasn't getting a polish and now I know. This was just a very poor attempt. Now I remember this one. This one was a heartbreaker. I had this beautiful piece of boulder or at least what I thought was a beautiful piece of boulder. It's still got a nice seam going across here. I might have to actually look at this one again. And there was this tiny little colour bar up here and it looked real nice from the side. And I've showed this on the channel before. This was a case where I just, I got so demoralised, I worked away at it. 
got it down and then look at that just a little little hole there devastating absolutely devastating I was very sad about that but it's all a learning curve and because of that I didn't finish it so I just chucked some water on it to show you the color I still think looking back on it now that I can get some use out of this so this might actually appear on the channel and I might I might work on it because I think this is one of the first pieces of boulder opal I did other than just grinding through some ironstone to see what it felt like. Terrible job, once again. Pass me. Absolutely shocking. Did not start off talented. Continuing on with the tour of horrors is this painted lady, Endemuka. It's a very thin, thin piece and didn't have a lot in it. It was really just... This is what I recommend to all people starting out. You just want to play with the different, different kind of sand, the different matrix of it all. I call it matrix, but then you get it confused with matrix opal. It's literally just the the material that it's that's hosting the opal. So this is a really hard like marble almost. It's a uh, it's very interesting. Takes a long time to get through, even with the Dremel. This is before I had the Sinted Burrs. The Sinted Burrs would help out a little bit here. But, yeah, you can see here, I'm already getting a lot better at getting a nicer finish on the Opal, but this, once again, I just stopped after the Electroplated Diamond, I think. I might have actually played with a few Nova Point kind of competitors. A lot of those Chinese Burrs, I think I burnt out on a couple of pieces just like this. And, yeah, basically got very little from it. You can see there's a little bit of colour there, but... Nothing, nothing to be too excited about. So just when I started branching out, trying different materials, just getting a feel for it. I haven't worked a lot of Painted Lady, so I would like to go back to some of that material. And here, kind of working on different shapes, different pieces. So this is a Bellum Knight, very sand shot, just completely sand shot. But even... Even this is a good idea because at least it gives you an idea of the shape that you're looking for in a Bellum Knight. I mean, it's distorted heavily just because of the sand, but you can see where it started and if it was an intact piece. This is the kind of shape that I was expecting. And now that I've worked on a couple really nice pieces of it, um, I'm very happy that I actually worked with a couple, couple little pieces like this that were sand shot or just potchy, common, common opal. It's, it's all very worthwhile practice. You might finish the piece and be incredibly disappointed, but you really shouldn't be. Later on, when you're further down the track, you'll look back on it and say, you know what, that was actually a useful exercise. All of this is practice and none of it is talent. You don't have to be naturally gifted at this. And here, this is just playing with a piece that's also incredibly sand shot heaps of pits and this is me just playing with the idea of getting these really uneven surfaces and this is where I really learned how difficult it is to deal with a piece if you make it incredibly uneven so to all you carvers out there you know what it's like if you go at it and start making these divots and stuff you've got to get all of those surfaces hit in all the future steps as well and it takes a long time as you would have seen when I did the Julian Stavrius recent Jemmy piece that he sent me. Well, that he dropped off. And I worked on, and that one, that took tens of hours with the Dremel. Just to get nicely finished. Here, I've clearly done an absolutely horror show job on it. Absolute nightmare, but that's kind of, that's fine. That's actually fine. It's a great learning experience. Huge learning curve in Opal. And yeah, basically I've shown you six pieces here. Really, if you're getting started, just don't be disappointed. Every little piece you work on, no matter how garbage it is, it's all great learning and keep the pieces. Keep the pieces aside somewhere. I keep all these in a little container. It's, it's just funny to look back on and I'm glad I'm looking at them now. You really see how far you've come when you go back to the start. So don't be don't be disheartened. 
YouTube, anyone you're watching on YouTube, it's typically not their first time. And there is a lot of a lot of practice that you don't see behind the scenes that have already happened or even happens during these videos. I mean, this is just six pieces I worked on really early, and some of them are really, really early. But even between each of these, this is just a small collection of them. I've worked, even before the channel, I've worked tens of pieces of each type of material. So it's it just doesn't happen instantly overnight. Give yourself a good dozen or even more stones. If the first ten are terrible, just keep going and eventually, who knows, you might cut a hundred terrible stones, but once you get the hang of it, every stone from that point on will be so much easier and you'll you'll enjoy it along the way. It's it's plenty of learning. If you're that kind of person that likes to likes to learn and get a feel for a lot of different things, then go for it. If you want to kind of become a master of just a a single kind of category, like if you just work a lot of Kubipedia material or just a lot of boulder material, you'll become an expert at that individual material in no time. If you're doing it on a daily basis or even even if you just spend your weekends doing it, you'll be perfectly fine in no time. Just don't stress, don't push yourself too fast, it's, it's all just learning. Zero talent is required for this stuff, you just learn along the way and you'll be you'll be absolutely flying with the eagles in no time just don't get disheartened definitely stick at it and yeah if you if you ever need help or whatever just get in touch or check out a couple videos there's heaps of great channels out there i'm hoping i can join the collection of great channels eventually but yeah i think that will do it that will do it for this video and i look forward to recording plenty more Trying to make it look easy. It's never easy. Opal is Opal is tough. But we stick at it. We get better. And we love it. Love the journey. And hopefully end up with a few pieces that are much nicer than the six that you see in front of your eyes now. So have fun with it guys. Don't stress. Don't push yourself too hard. Be nice to yourself. And just, yeah, carve away. You'll get better.